Hello everybody, it's Yuri Goman. Today I will teach you how to draw UML class diagrams. UML class diagram is a structure diagram. In a nutshell, it represents how real-life elements translate into the blocks of code in the system. It describes types of elements known as classes, like animal or car. Classes act as templates or blueprints for creating objects or, in other words, variations of the class. Variation examples are a lion or a monkey for an animal class and Volkswagen and BMW for a car. Each object is a unique combination of different value class attributes have, like where car color is an attribute and red or blue are values. By creating a class diagram, you map how the system would look like and basically create the first draft of a future database structure. Class diagram is one of the data modeling technique variants. The second one is ERD or Entity Relationship Diagram, also known as a cross food notation. You can use both the model on a concept level to create an independent diagram or on a logical level to show the specific solution design and even on a physical level to model the database. Let's begin with an overview of diagram elements. First is class, which represents a blueprint or a template for an object defining what kind of data and behavior that object will have in a system. Think of it as a recipe for creating objects with certain properties or attributes and actions you can perform with an object or operation. Classes are always represented with nouns like car, person or user. It tells you what kind of an object the class represents. The name should be clear and descriptive, reflecting its role and purpose within the system. Avoid ambiguous or generic names like data or object. It is a common question how to generate a list of classes to ensure that you don't lose any. There are some techniques for that. First is use case analysis. Review the use cases and identify the main nouns and actions involved into the system. The nouns are often correspond to candidate classes, while verbs suggest operations that those classes will perform, and we will talk about them later. The second technique is known as CRC cars or class responsibility collaborator. CRC cars are kind of a brainstorming technique in which you just sit and think about possible classes, their responsibilities, and who they collaborate with or other classes they interact with. Another approach is to read through all the documentation you have, specifically the glossary, and write down all the nouns that could be potential classes. You will need to filter those nouns and separate them from attributes later, and I will talk about that in the following section of this video. Attributes, also called properties, are pieces of information or data that belong to a class. They describe what an object, an instance of the class, knows or stores. Think of attributes as the characteristics or traits of an object. For example, if you have a class named car, some attributes could be color, model, or year. In the class diagram, we do not specify which color for each car, because attributes represent an object with such an attribute, but not a specific instance and value of that attribute. A lot of people confuse classes and attributes because both originate from nouns, and because a lot of people didn't have proper computer science education before working in IT, which is a common thing. To avoid confusion, best practice is using attributes for simple data types, like strings, number, or dates. At the same time, if something represents a complex entity with its behavior or identity, like customer or product, it should be modeled as a separate class. Remember that classes represent entities or objects that have both attributes and operations, while attributes are characteristics of those entities and usually represent simple values like numbers or tags. The next category of elements is association, and there is a whole bunch of them. In general, the association is a relationship between classes that shows that classes are combined in a specific context. This line could have ends, indicating navigability, representing that you can access class B from class A, but not vice versa. I don't recommend using navigability unless the whole team really understands its value and knows how to read it. Just keep both ends with no error heads and you will be just fine in 99% of projects. Besides simple association, we have stronger association types for different purposes. Aggregation is a relationship between two objects, where one object, the whole, contains or it's made up of other objects, the parts. But those parts can still exist independently. For example, think of a car and its wheels. A car has wheels, but the wheels can exist without the car. The car can be destroyed, but the wheels might still be used on a different vehicle. The key point here is that the part can exist without the whole. Important to understand that aggregation, like other association types, makes sense within the context of your project, because in some other cases, there might be no sense in wheels without the car, and you need to use composition. 
second type is composition, which is a stronger form of aggregation where the parts cannot exist independently of the whole. If the whole is destroyed, the parts are destroyed too. For example, a building and its rooms. A building has rooms, but if you demolish the building, the rooms are also destroyed. The key point here is that the parts cannot exist without the whole. Finally, generalization also known as inheritance. It shows that one class, subclass or child is a more specific version of another class, the superclass or parent. The child class inherits properties and behaviors from the parent class, but can also have its unique features. For example, a dog class is a subclass of an animal class. A dog is an animal, so it inherits all general characteristics like breathing, but it also may have specific behaviors like barking. The key point here is that the child class inherits from the parent class. Some people mistakenly use UML class diagrams to show behaviors, like processes or actions, through associations instead of focusing on the system structure. For example, adding an association between admin and user, explaining that admin can create user. While this might be true, the UML class diagram doesn't show access to feature operations on classes, it shows relationships. So you don't need to draw such an association unless you need to keep records of which admin creates which user, which you usually don't. The confusion arises because UML class diagrams are meant to represent the static structure of a system, showing how classes relate to each other in terms of attributes and relationships not the dynamic behaviors or interactions between objects, which are better suited for other UML diagrams like sequence diagrams or activity diagrams. There is no single bullet how to fix these behaviors, it only comes with experience, so keep the problem in mind and work with your mentor. Or, if you know the universal solution, drop a comment below this video to share it with the community. Another important part of UML class diagram is multiplicity which describes how many instances of one class can be associated with an instance of another class through relationship. Multiplicity is shown as a range with a minimum and maximum number of instances that can be associated. Multiplicity can be used for association and attributes. Let me show you example of attributes first. Single attribute value, which is the default, like a person has exactly one name. Optional attribute, 0 or 1. A person may or may not have a middle name. Multiple values attribute or collection. An article can have multiple authors. Also, here are some examples of multiplicities for association. One-to-one -one relationship. A person has exactly one passport, while one passport may belong to one person only. One-to-many relationship. A teacher in the course can teach multiple students, but each student has only one teacher within the one course. Many-to-many -many relationship. Students can enroll in multiple courses, each with multiple students. One-to-fix strange relationship. Customer must have between one and five bank accounts. Zero-one relationship. A person may or may not have a driver's license. This is an optional kind of relationship. An interesting moment about classes, associations, and multiplicities. Remember the examples I told you a second ago, where did the article have multiple authors as a multiplicity for an attribute? This is one way to do things. Another is to have a separate author class and connect it to the article with an association. Why both are possible and valid? Because the context matters and is different from project to project. The first case works for situations when you don't need author accounts, for example, but just list of authors to choose from when creating an article. The second is for the system where authors could publish their article themselves. Before using the elements I'm going to talk about next, make sure to consult the development team of the specific class implementation. In UML class, data types help define the kind of information a class attribute or property can hold. Think of it as setting the specific rules or labels for the type of the data each attribute should contain. Here are some common data types with examples. String. Think of it as a container for text or words, like names, messages, or descriptions. If you have an attribute called name with the data type string, it can hold values like Alice, Hello World, or any other text. Integer. This container holds whole numbers, without decimal points like counting numbers. An attribute age with the data type integer could have values like 5 or 100, but not 23.5, as it's not a whole number. Float or double. These are containers for decimal numbers, used when you need to store fractions or more precise numbers like price. Boolean. This type holds true or false values, like yes or no questions. For example, if you have an attribute is active with a Boolean data type, it can only hold true, yes or false, no. Perfect for checking condition like if this account active. Finally, 
The date data type is used to hold information like day, month and year in different formats. The next advanced category is operations, which represents the behavioral features of a class. Operations define what actions an object of the class can perform. Operations are typically placed in the bottom compartment of a class diagram. Operations are written in the following format. Visibility defines who can access the operation. I will talk about it explicitly in a moment. Name showing the essence of the operation, for example, deposit or withdrawal. Parameter list a comma separated list of operations parameters each specified as a name. Return type showing the data type the operation returns, which is optional if there is no return value. Now about visibility that works both for operations and attributes. Imagine that you have a collection of books and you decide who can read which book based on their access level. Here is how the main types of visibility work. First, public. Think of a book you keep on the living room table. Anyone who visits you can pick it up and read with no restrictions. In UML, such an attribute will be marked with a plus. If a class attribute is public, any other class can see and use it. Second is private. Imagine a diary you keep in your bedroom drawer. Only you can open it and read it. No one else can access it. In UML, it will be marked with a minus. Private attributes or operations can only be accessed within the same class. Next is protected. Think of a family photo album in the living room cabinet. You, your siblings and close family members are allowed to open and see it, but not just any visitor. In UML, it should be marked with a number sign. Protected attributes and methods can be accessed by the class that created them and by any subclasses that inherit from it. Finally, package. Let's say you have a set of game instructions and keep them in the drawer in the game room. Only friends who come over to play know it's there and can use it, but people outside your home don't know it exists. In UML, such an attribute or operation has a tilde mark. Package level visibility allows access within the same package, like group of classes that are related. I assume that you might have expected more elements here like interfaces, dependencies, objects and other elements that are a part of UML class notation. I assume that they are pretty useful and maybe system analysts use them a lot. At the same time, the majority of business analysts would never even touch them, as they are too technical. So apologies if you wanted that, but you'll have to go somewhere else to study them. The only thing I could do for you is to point you toward the resource called umldiagrams.org, which contains a lot of information about all the different diagrams and its elements. Now, let's create an example of UML class diagram. Let's do a very simple example for online shopping. First, we need to create a list of all the classes that will be in the system. So we have obviously the customer. Customers will pay for the orders. They will make orders, obviously, so there is not a class. And yeah, they need to first uh, browse through the products to understand what they want to buy. And actually, before they get to the payment, they first put their products into the shopping cart, I suppose. Yeah, we, we can add that as well. And I think we could start dealing with that, actually. So we can start by adding attributes to the customer. So what would they probably have? I think we can go with a name and of course there's going to be a uh, password for them oh and logging yeah of course logging should be there as well okay let's do that uh, maybe we'll have some id so that we can easily find them in our system okay that's probably enough we're not doing something very complicated with going with a simple example here just to showcase how it looks like together so next gonna be products right so what's going to be their product name and of course there is price and there is going to be some kind of details probably like you know, description so that you know what you're buying maybe there are more details uh, depending on the product but th that's the basics one before we proceed i need to fix this important mistake so we don't use uh, plural we use singular for class names always because every class represents the blueprint of an object the first hunch would be to connect customer and a product because customer buys products, they view the list of products, but that would be a huge mistake because instead of creating relationship, we try to show behavior here. And I was talking about this in, in the video. So we don't add this connection. Yes, of course they can uh, view the products in the system, 
but they do that through the interface, not the connection. So we don't actually have a relationship between the customer and the product in our database. At best, we have connection between customer and order and products can be added to order. So we connect them in this way, but we added a shopping cart here. So it's gonna be a little bit complicated. So the customer adds products into the basket, into the shopping cart before the put it to the order. Modern websites have separate classes and separate entities for shopping carts because in this way they can email them you and remind of the purchases that you didn't finish. So yes, what you do, you put products in the shopping cart and then when you want to check out, the system creates order based on the shopping cart you created. And of course, uh, the customer performs payment for that order, but we also Pay for the specific order that's why we have this relationship right here in this way customer will have access for the products they bought through this whole connection to this whole line but we also need to understand that while the order is connected to payment we also need to connect customer to the order the reason is because when we create an order it's relevant to one and specific customer we cannot have the same order for many customers, unless there's another system where we can do. But in, in our, there's one customer and one order. So we add a composition here. Why a composition? Because without the customer, there is no need for that specific order. So there is a very strict connection between them. The same goes for the customer and the shopping cart, actually. As I mentioned before, some websites store your shopping carts on that later remind you of the purchases you wanted to make, but you didn't perform them. And here is the very basic example of the class diagram that you can create. GML class is one of the many cool diagrams that you can learn and use in your projects. If you like this video, be bold to subscribe and then check out this video to learn about GML sequence diagrams of you the entire GML tutorial playlist. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope this video was helpful to you.